The Democrats nominated a former populist named William Jennings Bryan for president. Um, Bryan came from Nebraska. Um, he was a very religious man, and he pretended to speak for farmers and workers, in other words, for ordinary people. He attacked um, what he called the malefactors of great wealth, um, rich people living in the East, who he held responsible for the plight of farmers and workers. To oppose him, the Republicans nominated Ohio Governor William McKinley. McKinley didn't campaign much. In fact, McKinley sat on his front porch for the most part and let his, let his front men and, his, and his, his advance men do most of his campaigning. Brian barnstormed the country, logging 18,000 miles by train in the nation's first whistle-stop campaign and gave as many as 30 speeches a day. In speeches steeped in religious fervor, Brian called on Americans to smite down the moneylenders and drive them from the halls of government. Brian favored the free coinage of silver to deflate the value of the dollar and make it easier for farmers and others to pay off their debts. Having behind us the producing masses of this nation and the world, supported by the commercial interests, the laboring interests, and the toilers everywhere, we will answer their demand for a gold standard by saying to them, you shall not press down upon the brow of labor this crown of thorns. You shall not crucify mankind upon a cross of gold. While Bryan's moral righteousness and biblical oratory scared off Catholic and ethnic voters, the Republicans released an unprecedented flood of pamphlets, posters, and press releases calling for ethnic and cultural toleration and a full dinner pail. Bryan took the West and parts of the South, but McKinley proved a lot more popular among working people because he never really touched on the religious issue. Winning the votes of the nation's urban and industrial working men McKinley crushed Bryan in a lopsided victory. After the presidential election of 1896, the Populist Party faded away as returning prosperity pushed prices higher and U.S. farmers prospered. But the struggle between capital and labor continued. 